Here it is, the thing you've been waiting for, GHV Air Fill Savers. It's the 25th of February 2019, day 11, Julian's Bubble Writing. GHV Air Fill Savers. Excellent. <laughs> so, what are you doing there, Julian? Well, I'm just looking at this uh, helicopter that we've uh, been preparing for the East Anglian Air Ambulance. I uh, suddenly thought that I've never actually flown a helicopter before, unlike you. And I thought, well, how did I get here in the first place? Well, it, what, what is my background in aviation? Uh, and it's slightly different from yours the, that you did the other night, because uh, I was brought up uh, with an aviation family. My father being in the Royal Air Force uh, from the 1950s onwards, uh, stationed first of all at RAF Marham. Uh, I was born uh, in Kings Lynn, uh, almost straight into the, the Air Force at that particular time. Uh, he was on Valiance and then got moved up to Yorkshire onto uh, Vulcans. And uh, I, I know the first time I got into an aircraft was in a uh, glider in a T-31. I think I was just a few months old uh, on my mother's lap uh, and we did a launch and a landing. Uh, there's a photograph of that somewhere, if I could find it I'd uh, put it online, but I can't find it at the moment, but I know it's around somewhere. Uh, a few years after that, or about a couple of years old, uh, my father had a uh, share in a Bolco Junior light aircraft, I think that was at uh, Curtin Lindsay Airfield in uh, South Yorkshire, and or it might have even been Lincolnshire, I'm not sure where the border is in that, it's, it's close to the border. So I do remember him uh, flying me, it's only two-seater, he flew my mother, uh, himself and me down to visit my uncle at his uh, little farm airfield near uh, Hobbit St John's. Um, and I sat on my mother's lap all the way there. And I remember it coming back, not the journey down there, because my dad, uh, after takeoff, did a beat up at the airfield and pulled a lot of G. I remember my mum my crying out because I was quite a heavy youngster at the time. <laughs> so, squashed her a bit. But uh, that, that's some of my earliest aviation memories. Um, but then um, later on in my life uh, I got involved in gliding and flying because my father as well as being in the RAF uh, was a light aircraft pilot as we've just seen and a uh, gliding instructor as well and a tug pilot. Uh, so when he eventually mustered down to the RAF again at RAF Marham uh, we started uh, doing uh, uh, light aviation flying at a nearby uh, aero club um, in fact, we started off at the um, at Swanton Morley, at the Norfolk Norwich Aero Club, where it was then based, flying in Cessnas and uh, uh, the occasional trip in the in a glider, because the Norwich Soaring Group was also based there, with a few famous people uh, helping uh, run it and owning gliders there. A, ch a chap called Alf Warmager, who was a retired uh, squadron leader, um, and he was a very famous for holding gliding records, and at once the Sheriff of Norfolk. Uh, so. Uh, uh, and he had some gliders there, and there was a tiger moth tug there. Uh, and I think eventually, once we got uh, two seaters, I remember being towed up behind a, a YT-53 Sovereign glider, all metal Slingsby Sovereign glider there. Uh, but then I started to actually do my gliding. I decided well, to actually do get qualified in gliding. Uh, luckily, I was a member of the Air Training Corps in Downer Market 1018 Squadron, and I got accepted onto a gliding training course in the... Um, sort of late-ish 1970s, mid to late 1970s. Again, that was at Arius Wantamorley, uh, under the uh, tutelage of squadron leader Ron Page, who ran the squadron back there, uh, off the winch launch using T-21s and T-31s. I mostly did the T-31s, and eventually got to a stage where they decided I was too dangerous to fly with, so they let me have three goes around on my own. Uh, I do have a, a uh, photograph of the, just after the landing, there because uh, the way they used to do things with landing there, you used to go off on the, on the winch, do your circuit, especially a very quick circuit and land, and then a Land Rover, bright yellow Land Rover, shot out to you and had a trailer on the back. Uh, two other cadets jumped out of it, grabbed the glider, pushed it up onto the trailer, and then you zoom back in really high speed back to the, back to the launch site again. It was great fun. Uh, and sometimes when I was doing, uh, you normally had to get out of it, but uh, when I was doing my solo, and it was the end of the day, they said, don't stay in the glider, don't get out, you can have another, another two of these. So, so I was bumped around back to the launch point, and off I, off I went. But with the air training course and the basic gliding course, you only ever have your three launches. Uh, so I then went to uh, uh, the local civilian gliding club, at Peter and Spalding Gliding Club in, in uh, Lincolnshire, 
uh, where I again went back to learn how to do aero tow. And it was a, in a Boshan glider, it's a Polish two seat glider, and now considered vintage, so that sort of ages me a little bit. Um, went and got up to solo standard with that. Now, because the Bosch and the two seat gliders were expensive gliders at that time in the, in the late 70s, uh, they didn't want to send me solo in the two seat glider, so no, you're going to go solo in a single seat Skylark 2 for the first time. Completely different to the Bosch, very light like going from a, uh, a Mini to a Ferrari, well, at that particular time, so uh, it was quite an exciting flight. And again, uh, I think the tug was out of commission, the one we used to have at uh, Peterborough Spalding at that time. So they flew another tug, tug in from, again, from Swanton Morley, and it was the Swanton Morley Tiger Moth I went off behind. So that was great fun. So I did my, my gliding with that. Um, then uh, I hit the job market, because that was, I was sort of coming out of school and out of college at the time. And I went to work uh, for a year with the Seven Trent Water Authority. Uh, it was a sandwich course, a part of the, the uh, training course I was doing, college course I was doing, which was remote sensing, image interpretation and cartography at Luton College. So I ended up uh, one year, uh, 1982 it was, uh, up in near Derby with the Seven Trent Water Authority. And I was given the task of flood mapping. Uh, and that turned out to be wading in icy waters uh, almost waist deep, looking for marks on trees and on walls and on the back of people's refrigerators in the house as to where the highest flood levels came up to. Uh, and then taking a gang of, of uh, lads out with uh, uh, surveying equipment to then survey back to the nearest uh, trig point uh, to map it all on. And they said this was going to take at least a year, several years probably to do this. And I thought, oh no, it's going to be too cold out here. I did remote, so it, remote image and uh, aerial survey, so I'll use my contacts. I went to Marchington uh, Gliding Club, they had a motor glider there, uh, managed to arrange to use the motor glider, uh, went to Jessup's in Leicester and took some near-infrared film, and off we went and did near-infrared photography of the whole of the, the, the um, uh, wash plane of the rivers Trent and Dove. All came out very well and we plotted onto the map, so we did the whole thing in about three months. Uh, so, and then at the end of it, we were literally, we were, we were supposed to be there for a, for a whole year doing it, so uh, we literally did whatever we liked for the rest of the year, so I think, which included a bit more flying at uh, Marchington Gliding Club. Um, then back to, uh, back to home again, and um, after several different parts of career, I worked for Apple at one time, then I worked for a company called Wizards of the Coast, a games company, um, at which I had, headquarters was in Seattle. Ended up over there for a little period of time, and uh, one of the my friends who was an artist for the company who lived out there, a guy called Chris Rush, his father owned a pipe at Pacer in Snoqualmish airfield, um, just north of Seattle. So we went for a flight. He said, well, I'll come for a flight. So I, I sat uh, right down seat, obviously there, and we flew all the way around Seattle at low level, around the Space Needle, and we did a turn within the radius of the, uh, the, Boeing, th the Boeing factory. Um, uh, building, I think it's the biggest building on earth I think at the time um, and a lot of flying around there and over Puget Sound and so forth and it was very very interesting uh, and then watched the, um, I think it was an early Boeing model that they had at the Boeing uh, Museum getting ready for its first flight as well so then back to the UK and they moved us from our Glasgow office to our London office now I liked living in Glasgow at the time um, so I was a bit dubious about moving back to London. I said I'll move back to London if the agency that was finding us places to live would find me a place to rent within staggering distance of an area club bar. Which is exactly what they did. They found me a house on the, uh, literally on the, on the uh, periphery of uh, White Waltham Airfield. Um, so I could uh, uh, shave in the morning, I was looking out of one window and I would see Concorde flying out of Heathrow and looking out the other window and I was watching the Spitfires and aerobatic aircraft land at the airfield and I could walk to the airfield where I did my uh, light aircraft training on Piper Warriors which I then soloed in a lovely Piper Warrior 161 uh, with sprung aeons, I remember that, called G-Jump uh, Juliet Alpha Mike Papal um, have a great time there, met lots of very interesting people, lots of uh, British Airways captains used to meet and greet in the uh, Aero Club bar there, uh, people like Paul Bonham who went on to race for uh, Red Bull, uh, all sorts of different types of people there, Tim Darrow who was a training captain for Cathay Pacific who might get to see this video because he's uh, one of my friends on uh, Facebook, 
whether he looks at it or not, I don't know. Um, and we also used to trip backwards and forwards between Waltham and Duxford uh, to meet some of his uh, friends there. I think he had a, um, a, a part share in the Beach A team with John Remain, guy who runs one of the uh, flying operations uh, at Duxford. Uh, so it was all going very well. But then I eventually left uh, Maidenhead, had sadly to move away, moved back to uh, the same town as my parents, down in Market. Uh, I went in a bit of an abeyance as far as the active flying was concerned, but I kept my hand in doing what I'm doing now with these things, keeping model building and so forth, and occasional trip out to an airfield. Uh, then in recent um, years, I joined a business club to try and help promote my, my new con um, consulting business. Uh, and during that time I met Sally first of all, who uh, as you've seen from the previous episode is uh, uh, the first woman fast jet pilot to go through training and then one day we met a chap called Tim Wiltshire who uh, had an idea uh, for a charity he wanted to set up and was already doing it in a limited way flying youngsters in microlights trying to get more youngsters airborne because the ATC that I was a member of back in the 70s wasn't doing anything like the amount of flying uh, that I was doing back then uh, so where could youngsters go to get airborne at a reasonable price and microlighting seemed to be the thing so he was flying out of Wingland airfield uh, but then he said, well, we need to get this done, if we can get a template for this operation done, get it done nationally, see how we can do it. So we looked to see if we could get an airfield ourselves a bit closer, so Sally and I could be a bit more involved. Looks like we've got one, very local to down the market at uh, Marshland. The owner uh, is very happy to let us use it, hopefully. Um, so we're just getting up and running with that at the moment. Um, and then we decided we need to get back in currency again. So Sally and I both went over to England and have a flight around to the microlight. And on the Sunday, you'll see the episode, uh, the last episode, uh, where we flew in gliders again. Uh, again from uh, Peterborough Sporting Gliding Club. I've rejoined there and the instructor very happily said, probably about three or four flights, I'll be back solo again. So uh, I've joined for three months and hopefully I can get myself solo again. All dependent on the weather. It's more dependent on weather for gliding than anything else. Um, and again, I am just a total aviation person. I like aviation modelling. I read a lot of aviation books. Um, I found a channel uh, on YouTube. I watch a lot of channels on YouTube uh, called Plane Savers. That's Mikey McBrien actually uh, does now. He was the guy who was one of the main characters in uh, Ice Pilots Northwest Territories. Very, very good. If you can see that on, I think it was on Netflix now, Amazon Prime. Very, very well, well worth seeing. Fantastic Fly the Wall documentary of flying in sub zero temperatures in DC 3s, C 46s, Electras, and DC 4s all over North Canada. Uh, he did this series called Plane Savers, all about saving a DC 3 for um, uh, uh, it was a genuine uh, D Day DC 3 that's trying to get back in the air again in time for June the 6th, for the anniversary of the D Day landings. Uh, his method of doing it was amateur issues getting better all the time but very immediate video talking straight to camera having a good time about it not worrying about whether he doesn't seem to be professional or not and he's getting a huge amount of hits he's got a big uh, fan base out there so we thought we'd do the same thing hopefully to lead in to our fundraising efforts for our charity which is now called ghv or get high volare as in the song for getting uh, youth high but high flying as opposed to high any other means so that's us, uh, that's a positive history of my background. I've probably forgotten a whole lot more than, <laughs> than I've probably managed to say here, but um, uh, that will do for now. So thank you very much and cheerio. Awesome, thank you Julian. I'm sure there's a lot more to come, but it'll come out in the fullness of time. Beautifully interesting. <laughs>